Okay. So, I'd like to uh, welcome you to the lecture today, where uh, we are going to basically talk about uh, how to find uh, shear stresses and uh, normal stresses on surfaces which are uh, arbitrary. Okay. And uh, the basic motivation for the problem is uh, as follows. If we have a cylindrical jet, if we have a cylindrical jet or a cylindrical surface, and that is a circle okay, of radius r 0. And if I am looking at this curved surface, the direction of the outward normal is going to be in the radial direction okay. and the direction of the tangent on the surface is going to be in the axial direction which is z. Okay. So, this is the direction of the normal and uh, this is a tangential direction. Now, normally what we have to do is we have to apply boundary conditions on surfaces of this kind and these boundary conditions usually have a physical significance. So, the boundary conditions would invoke things like continuity of shear stresses that is tangential stresses or would involve normal stresses. Okay. So, when you write the boundary conditions which we will be doing later on in the course, uh, you will be the boundary conditions deal with normal stresses and shear stresses. So, in this case the normal stress component is going to be given by tau r r. This is the normal stress component. Okay. And what about the tangential stress component or the shear stress component? That is going to be given by tau r z for example. Well, one of the uh, tangential stress components is going to be given by tau r z. So, when you are going to write the boundary conditions, you are going to write the boundary conditions involving tau r r, which uh, you are going to uh, relate to velocity gradients depending upon the constitutive relationship. Supposing it is a Newtonian fluid, you will write it as a constant viscosity multiplied by the gradient of the uh, velocity. Okay. So, that is what you would do and since these are the standard directions r and z, it is easy for you to actually know what these quantities are, you can easily compute them. Okay. But suppose now, suppose the surface is of a tapering jet. And uh, so now what is happening is the liquid is accelerating and the jet is getting tapered and it becomes becoming smaller and smaller. The radius here is R0 and R0 keeps decreasing as a function of z. Okay. This is the z direction. So, now if you want to look at the surface and now you when you are going to apply the boundary conditions, these boundary conditions are also going to be in terms of the normal stress components and the tangential stress components. But what about the direction of the normal component is going to be in this direction this is you draw a tangent plane and then you draw the normal to that. So, this is the direction of the outward normal okay. and what is the stress component that you are interested in? If this is the vector n, 
the stress component you are interested in is tau n n, that is your normal stress component at that surface at that point. What about here? The tangential stress component is going to be tau n t, okay. The point I am trying to make here is that tau n n has both a component in the radial direction as well as in the axial direction. The tau n t also is having a component in the radial direction as well as in the axial direction. So one of the things which you would be doing is you would be uh, using tau n n and tau n t when you have arbitrary shapes of surfaces and so you want to be able to calculate what tau n n is and what tau n t is and what we want to do is we want to relate tau n n and tau n t in terms of the classical uh, shear stresses um, ar uh, around the a fixed coordinate system around the x direction or the r direction or the z direction or the y direction, okay. So the idea is and the boundary conditions now involve tau n n and tau n t, these are not along uh, r and z directions unlike the earlier case r and z directions, okay. So what we want to do is we want to relate tau n n and tau n t in terms of tau um, r r and tau r z, these are the classical directions that we have. So r theta z for the cylindrical coordinates is the you know uh, are the different axes and what we want to do is we want to be able to relate the normal stress and the tangential stress components, okay. I think on an arbitrary surface to this. The reason is the differential equations, they contain the shear stress components in the classical directions tau r r and tau r z and I also want to have my boundary conditions also in the same, uh, the same tau r r tau r z. So what we want to do therefore is to relate tau n n and tau n t in terms of tau r r and tau r z, okay. So that is the idea, that is the motivation as to why we are doing this. So what we will do is we will do two approaches, first we will use a physical approach and we will get this relationship but then you will see that the physical approach in involves using a specific geometry and uh, getting a specific relationship. What you want to do is you want to have a mathematical framework by which you can generalize this so that you can actually apply it across any arbitrary surface, okay. So that is the idea. So first we will do the physical approach, try to get this relationship between tau n n tau n t in terms of some classical known uh, components tau x x tau y y whatever it is tau x y and then we will generalize it, okay. So let us use, uh, now we are going to simplify things and uh, one simplification we are going to make is we are going to use a rectangular geometry, okay. And we are going to make a second simplification which is we are going to look at things in two dimensions, okay. And look at two dimensions. So this makes it easy for me to draw pictures on the board. So it is going to be a better picture than what you had yesterday, okay. So what we are going to do is x and that is let us say that is the x direction and this is the y direction and uh, I am going to take a triangle, okay. This is definitely in the direction of the y and this is in the direction of x, right. So this is my arbitrary surface. So this side of my triangle represents my arbitrary surface. The normal to this is going to be given by this direction, 
Okay, that's the perpendicular I've drawn. And let's say that this is theta. What is this uh, uh, height? This is delta y. And what is this uh, length here along the x direction? That is delta x. Okay. What are the stresses which are acting on the vertical surface here? This stress is basically tau xx because the outward normal is in the x direction and the direction is also x. And uh, this is tau xy which is in this direction. The normal and the y are both positive. So, the way I am writing all these uh, stresses, they are all positive. Okay, the y direction is positive upwards, this is positive that way. What about here? I have stresses here which is tau yy which is in this direction and I have this surface here which is tau yx. Okay. Now, what I want to do is basically find out what are the what is the normal component of the stress here and the tangential component of the stress here and related to this. So, the normal component of the stress here I am going to denote that by tau n n. So, this tells you it is on a surface whose normal is in the n dire uh, direction n and in the direction of n and tau n t is let me just say it is upwards. So, tau n t is this way. Okay, this is tau n t. So, if I had a boundary of this kind and if I wanted to write my boundary conditions, I would write the boundary conditions in terms of tau n n and tau n t. But what I want to do is, I want to be in a position where I can write this boundary condition in terms of tau x x, tau y y, tau uh, y y, tau y x. Okay, that is what we are trying to do. So, our job now is to relate this to these stresses in the classical direction. Okay, And the way we are going to do this is by simply a force balance. A force balance which tells you that on in this triangular element which is infinite symbol, we look at all the forces we are acting on the system and say that that should basically give rise to an acceleration of the uh, fluid element inside this. Okay, So, basically we look at the acceleration. Okay, so, the force balance in the x direction is, so maybe I should write something here before I proceed. We want to find tau n n and tau n t in terms of tau x x, tau x y, etc. That is the job. Okay. So, let us do the force balance in the x direction. What do we have? Sorry, um, yeah, in the x direction, that is right. Let us do, uh, you need basically the forces acting on the system must be equal to the rate of change of momentum which is equal to mass times the acceleration. Okay. So, I am going to write the easy part first. The Supposing this fluid element is actually accelerating with let us say um, an acceleration in the direction of x uh, given by A x, then the acceleration of the system. So, this is because it is a triangle, the total volume element is half times delta x times delta y. Okay. And the acceleration of the system is A x. What about the forces acting on the element here? You have tau x x 
which is acting on delta y and you have tau y x this is in the y direction. So, we do not worry about this we have tau x x acting uh, on this we have tau y x which is acting over delta x and uh, what I want to do is I want to resolve these the forces arising because of these stress components in the x direction okay and clearly uh, the angle between two lines is equal to the angle between the perpendiculars. So, what does this mean if I want to draw a vertical line here this angle is going to be theta okay this angle is theta. So, the component of the tau n n in the x direction this is the negative x direction is going to be minus tau n n sin theta cos theta is vertical and then I have tau n t has to go with the cosine and that is also associated with the negative sign cos theta okay. You also have the body force which is acting on the system which is going to be given by half times rho g times um, delta x times delta y and what I have done is I have also forgotten something here which is the length element dl okay. So, if the length is delta l I need to mention that this is multiplied by delta l and this is multiplied by delta l okay because this is the stress and you will just look at it as if you are looking at the unit depth into the board. So, that the other dimension is just unity okay. So, this is uh, the equivalent of the delta x. So, now you have everything consistent. This is also g x yeah, but I am not going to worry too much about it and you will see why. The reason I am not going to worry about that this term and this term is these two terms the one on the left and the last term on the right they are given by a product of two infinitesimal quantities delta x delta y okay. All the other terms are of only a single uh, power. So, since these are basically infinitesimal quantities these are all of order epsilon. So, the first term and the last term are actually of order epsilon squared all other terms are of order epsilon. So, basically what this justifies and allows me to do is to drop these two terms and I am just going to write this here this is of order epsilon squared and therefore, this goes off to 0 and this goes off to 0 or because this is of order epsilon squared and all these other terms are of order epsilon okay. I like to do a y component balance a balance of the forces again in the y direction and uh, if Okay, let me before I do the y balance maybe I should uh, simplify this and write the x direction uh, balance 0 as tau x y sorry tau x x is that what it is tau x x delta y tau y x delta x and uh, minus tau n t with the sin theta delta l minus tau n n I got it the other way sorry cos theta delta l. Okay that is my balance. The, the other thing I can do is I can uh, relate delta L to delta X and delta Y okay by using my trigonometry. So, what is cos theta? Cos theta is delta X by delta L 
and therefore sin theta is going to be delta y by delta l. And uh, what I will do is I am going to write tau delta y as sin theta multiplied by delta l and uh, delta x as cos theta multiplied by delta l and uh, this gives 0 equals tau xx times sin theta plus tau yx cos theta minus tau nn sin theta minus tau nt cos theta and the delta l I can take it out because delta l is not equal to 0 it is only tending to 0 okay. So this goes off and so that means this my force balance in the x direction okay. So delta l is not equal to 0 remember that delta l only tends to 0. Good. So now I need to basically uh, do the same thing in the y direction because I have one equation. Remember, I know tau xx, tau xy, and all these quantities here. I know tau yx, I know tau xx. I have two unknowns tau nn and tau nt. I have only one equation. I need one more equation, and that other equation comes from the force balance in the y direction. Okay. So what is the force balance in the y direction going to give me? Um, again we are going to neglect the order of epsilon square terms. So I am going to just write the uh, only the contributions arising from the forces on the surfaces okay, because they are of order epsilon. So taking only the terms of order epsilon we have 0 equals tau xy multiplied by delta y plus tau yy multiplied by delta x okay and I need to do the resolution of the forces arising from this surface in the y direction and clearly these guys are the positive direction the way I have drawn this this outward normal so this is going to be tau nn cos theta but it is pointing downwards so it is going to be minus tau nn cos theta and I will remember to write my delta L and I get minus tau nt. Um, the tau nt sin theta component is going to be in the upward direction so that is going to be associated with the plus sign sin theta times delta L okay. Again do the same thing eliminate delta X and delta Y by using your trigonometry get everything in terms of delta L and uh, what do we have 0 equals tau XY times sin theta plus tau YY times uh, cos theta minus tau NN cos theta plus tau nt sin theta okay. So this how did I get this? Um, this is by using trigonometry okay. So now I have two equations and two unknowns and the two unknowns that are tau nn and tau nt. What I want to do is I can therefore solve for this right uh, the fact is you know tau xy tau yy from your constitutive relationship from if it is a Newtonian fluid you know tau xy is the viscosity times the derivative of the x component of velocity with y plus derivative of the y component of velocity with x. So you know all these okay. So I am going to move uh, do a little bit of rearrangement of these equations and I am going to write this as tau nn cos theta minus tau nt sin theta. 
I am moving this to the left hand side equals tau x y sin theta plus tau y y cos theta okay and uh, this is my y component balance let me write my x component balance the same way move these guys to the left I have tau n n sin theta plus tau n t cos theta equals tau x x sin theta plus tau y x cos theta okay. So these are right if I have not made any mistakes. So what we have got to do now is uh, you know I have got two equations and two unknowns you can solve this using anything that you have learned in uh, mathematics uh, earlier but uh, I am just going to do one more step and leave it. I would like to write this in a vectorial form which is I am going to write the left hand side as cos theta minus sin theta and uh, sin theta cos theta multiplying this vector tau n n tau n t okay equals tau x y sin theta plus tau y y cos theta tau x x sin theta and plus tau y x cos theta okay. So the idea is very simple I mean uh, uh, what I have done is I have just written those two equations in a vectorial form. So this is a vector now okay this is of the form A x equals B and what you can do is you can find x as A inverse B. So I am not going to do that there is something for you people to do. So find so the unknown is this so clearly the left hand side has my unknown tau n n and tau n t I want to find out tau n n and tau n t in terms of my known quantities tau x x tau x y tau y y etc. That was what we started off with so that is what we are doing here okay. So all these are this is known and this is the unknown okay and uh, x is clearly A inverse B and so you should be able to find out what this uh, tau n n and tau n t are in terms of my classical uh, directions x and y okay. You can of course do the same thing in three dimensions also then you will have a 3 by 3 matrix okay. Now what is the problem with this method this is of course a method which works and uh, you have of course found the solution for a surface which has an arbitrary uh, angle theta uh, inclined okay which is flat has an angle theta to the uh, x axis which is what we started off with. But clearly what you want is I mean when you are solving a problem you cannot be uh, you actually do not know what the surface is most of the time what is going to happen is you would not know what the surface is okay. So, this is the reason why we want to go away from this physical approach the physical approach gives me uh, an expression which is valid for this particular specific case. But uh, what I would like to do is I like to generalize this in the form of some kind of a mathematical equation or a mathematical formula which helps me to consider things for an arbitrary surface okay and that is what we want to do okay. So can this is valid for this particular surface which is at an angle theta 
okay so how do we generalize this to an arbitrary surface that's the question and what i'm saying is we have to use a mathematical framework I just want to emphasize that this mathematical framework is basically to help you do the generalization, okay. So that you know you kind of have a formula so you can just do your calculations very quickly. I mean you cannot be in a position where you are actually sitting and drawing surfaces and doing this physical argument of what the forces are and then trying to do this relationship, okay. And that is what we are going to see now. So before we uh, do this uh, generalization to this mathematical framework, so let me just write a few things maybe a small recap of medical framework. You uh, when you have a vector let us say a velocity vector what is the uh, typical thing you have possibly used in a course in physics you would write this as V x times E x where E x is a unit vector in the x direction V x is a component in the uh, in that direction plus V y times E y plus V z times E z okay. Now rather than and these are the the E x is the unit vector in the x direction and so on and V x is the component in the x direction etc. So rather than uh, talk in terms of x, y and z what people like to do is they like to talk in terms of indices because that kind of helps you make things uh, uh, more compact okay. So, that because you have r theta z in the cylindrical coordinate system you have r theta phi in the spherical coordinate system and there are several other coordinate systems where you have different variables. So, what we want to do is we are going to write rather than use x y z we will use 1, 2 and 3 the index okay we will use um, 1, 2 and 3. So, I am going to when I say V i I mean it is basically um, the component in the ith direction. So, V 1 would be the component in the first direction the first direction could be x for the Cartesian coordinates it could be r for the cylindrical coordinates and so on and so forth okay. So, what we can do is we can write the vector supposing instead of using x, y, z I want to write in terms of the comp, uh, indices 1, 2 and 3 okay. So, let me just say that uh, let me just write one more step here. So, i equals 1, 2, 3 correspond to x, y, z directions okay. I would like to uh, therefore, this velocity vector now becomes V 1 E 1 plus V 2 E 2 plus V 3 E 3 okay. And uh, what you would like to do is you would like to write this in a slightly more compact form as summation of V i E i. Okay. I just wanted to introduce this concept of uh, Einstein's uh, summation convention which basically tells you that what 
what does this say? It just says that if in a particular term you have an index which is repeated, that means you are actually summing over that term, okay. So, if in a term an index is repeated, then we are summing over that uh, index, okay, over the index. So, rather than write the velocity vector as I have written there as sigma v i e i, I can just write this as v i e i to 3. This is what you would have normally done, okay. So, here in this particular term, the index i is repeated. So, it automatically implies that I am actually summing over all the i's. So, I do not have to explicitly write the sigma sign. So, whenever you see a term with a repeated index, that means you are summing, okay, even if the summation sign is missing. Now, uh, supposing you have another vector u, which is therefore going to be given by u i e i, okay. Consider u. Now, how do you find out the dot product or the inner product of these two vectors, okay? What I would do is since this is being uh, summed over i rather than write it in terms of i and since I am now interested in writing this, uh, finding out this dot product, what I am going to do is I am going, I can, I am going to use a slightly different index u j e j. So, it does not matter because it is just an index. So, this is also going from 1 to 3, that is also going from 1 to 3, okay. So, I am going to write this as u j e j dotted with v i e i. Point I am trying to make here is that this dot product is going to contribute only when the two directions are identical, okay. If j is not equal to i, the dot product of ej and ej dot ei is going to be 0. Only if j equals i, you are going to have a contribution to the dot product, okay. So, ej, because normally we are working with directions which are perpendicular. So, ej dot ei is equal to 0 if i is not equal to j and is equal to 1 if i equals j. And that is, I can write this entire thing in a very compact way by saying that E i dot E j equals delta i j, which is the Kronecker delta, okay. So, the dot product E i dot E j gives me delta i j which is Kronecker delta and the Kronecker delta is defined as being equal to 0 if i is not equal to j equals 1 if i equals j. So, this dot product now is going to contribute this dot product u dot v can therefore be written as since it is going to contribute only if i equals j, I can write this as u i v i. So, what this means is you are summing over the corresponding components of the uh, two vectors, okay. Now, you are all comfortable with the way the vector is represented in terms of the uh, unit vectors because only one thing you need to specify the direction of the vector. When it comes to tensors, you need to specify not only the direction in which the component is acting, but also the direction of the surface on which it is acting. So, basically what it means is you need to specify two quantities, okay. So, basically a tensor like the shear stress or like the stress sorry, the stress components, the stress needs 
as to specify two directions. I mentioned this earlier, the direction of the uh, normal to the surface and to the direction of the um, component. Okay, whether this is not so that's what it was. That you have the two indices. The first index told you the direction of the normal. The second index told you the direction of the um, surface, whether it's normal or tangential or whatever it is. So now, when it comes to writing the stress tensor, what you are used to is writing this as maybe in the form of a matrix, where you write this as tau x x, tau x y. Tau xz, this as tau yx, tau yy, tau yz, this as tau um, zx, tau zy. My z is different in different places, huh? It depends on how much I have to bend. And this is tau zz. Okay. So basically, this is the way you possibly seen the stress uh, tensor earlier, written in the form of a matrix. So rather than having a one-dimensional vector component, you have a two-dimensional uh, matrix. Okay. In this case, it's three by three. What I want to do now is rather than talk about it. In terms of x and y, I am going to go back to using my notation of indices. Okay. So, indices why is this would mean tau 1 1, tau 1 2, tau 1 3, tau 2 1, tau 2 2, tau 2 3, tau 3 1, tau 3 2, and tau 3 3. Okay, so I'm, I've just done what I did for the vectors. Instead of talking about x, y, z, I'm just doing one, two, three. The one, two, three could be depending on your coordinate system, whatever. So I now want to write this again because see, when I'm trying to do my mathematical framework, I want to be in a position where I can actually um, represent the directions of and different components. So tau one one, for example, represents the component which is acting on a surface perpendicular to 1 also in the direction of 1. Okay. So basically what I am going to do is I am going to write the stress tensor T as uh, tau ij ei ej. So what does this mean? So remember, this particular term has both the i component being repeated as well as the j index being repeated. The i index is repeated, the j index is repeated. That means you are going to be summing over both i and j. Okay? You are going to first keep i constant, sum over j, and then vary i, and then sum over j again. So basically, you will have a total of 9 terms. Okay? So this basically has 9 terms. Okay. So, what I am doing is, I am just trying to tell you that tau xx or tau 1 1 is the component in the direction 1 acting on a surface whose normal I have chosen is also unity. Okay? That is what it is.
what I will just do make one uh, particular uh, statement now illustrate it and then we will possibly stop. I like to define just like we had uh, the dot product which was defined, I like to define a particular this particular quantity. We will explain this, I just want to illustrate to you what's going, what is in store for you on Monday. Okay. So, we have n dot t dot n and I want to eval evaluate this. What does n represent? n represents the normal. So, n is a vector, okay. this is a vector and this is also a vector and this is a tensor. What we want to show here is that n dot t dot n represents the stress component on a surface whose normal is in the direction n okay and acting along n okay so what we will do is we will uh, talk about how to evaluate this in the next class and you will then find out if this formula actually works for uh, what we did using the physical argument. But using the physical argument, we got the uh, expression for tau nn and tau nt earlier on. Okay, That was just by doing a force balance. So, in order for you to um, verify that what I have written here is actually correct, you would evaluate the uh, term on the left and then verify by whatever we did earlier. Okay, so That would be one way. Now, if you were interested in getting the tangential component on a surface whose outward normal is n, then what you would do is you would just do n dot t dot t. So, this is the direction of the tangential vector represents the component on a surface whose normal is n and the direction of the tangent is t. So, what this allows me to do is if I have an arbitrary surface, if the surface is given you can from calculus you can actually find the direction of the normal and you can find the direction of the tangent. So, if I, you have a surface y is equal to f of x or r is equal to f of z in the cylindrical coordinate system, you can actually find the direction of the normal and the direction of the tangent. Uh, so, on that surface if you wanted to find the normal stress component, I would use n dot t dot n. And if I wanted to find the tangential stress component, I would use n dot t dot t. These would basically be in terms because this is in terms of the, my classical directions x, y, z. So, what I am doing is basically whatever I did earlier in the class today by using a physical argument, but now I just use this formula to get my uh, components in the normal uh, direction and in the tangential direction. Okay? Thank you.